I grew up Pentecostal. Oh, okay. Yeah, North Carolina. Uh, I've been in LA for about eight years now, but uh, I grew up Pentecostal. Every so I probably missed maybe five, six Sundays my whole life until I turned eighteen. You know, <laughs> wow. so like, and Sunday nights. Maybe I, I might have missed nine Sunday nights. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sunday night's not that important. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I grew up um, fundamentalist, um, and. It always gets a bad rap because there's, you know, there's there's sweet, sincere Christians within every denomination, um, right? And uh, but when I when I got into uh, philosophy and theology, I was a wrestling coach, and um, the head wrestling coach at the private Christian school uh, was the head of the philosophy and theology department. Oh wow! <laughs> and so every day we would wrestle with the kids, coach for two hours. And then for two hours or maybe three hours after practice, we would sit down and talk about philosophy and theology. Wow. And I had no idea the, uh, the richness of mm-hmm. the church history and um, the theology that I was not privy to within the fundamentalist mm-hmm. church. And it's sad because right. anything considered Catholic <laughs> as a Protestant is a joke simply, simply based on the fact that you pray to Mary. Right. Right. That's that's it. So it's like everything poo pooed that is associated mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. Catholicism, and um, I wish I would have had this guy in my life when I was younger. But you know, God's time is perfect, um, and I, I needed it. It was at the time where I really needed um, that that richness that I knew was out there. I always I had this sense when I was younger like that that's out there because I was I always gravitated gravitated towards the philosophy side of things. I loved Bruce Lee. As a kid, oh yeah, he was my idol. I think I've memorized <laughs> that entire movie, Enter the Dragon. You know? Oh yeah, and um, and so I got into philosophy that way, and uh, I always loved uh, the Song of Solomon, Proverbs, mm-hmm. and Psalms. Those were all my those were my three favorite books, and Ecclesiastes. Yeah, wisdom also. literature. Yeah, and so I always gravitated towards that. And then you know, I get into college. I had, you know, I'm 34, so YouTube was uh, 06, so the year oh, I graduated okay. high school. You know, so you didn't have this access to information like we do now, like what you're creating and what Jay's right. creating. And so um, you just had to find it in a book. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Can you imagine that, dude? That's how it used to be not so long ago. Right. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So um, so then I uh, I was like seeking. I was, ne- I was needing something. And I was on the verge of like atheism. I was agnostic, right, in a way. Um, because my fundamentalist uh, literal interpretation of every sentence in the Bible um, <laughs> was not doing it for me. Right. You know what I mean? And I needed that poetic interpretation. I needed that uh, metaphorical understanding of certain mm-hmm. stories. And I didn't know that's what I needed. Um, but then I met my buddy John, and he opened up he opened that, that up that world to me, and... Uh, I have been obsessed ever since in my own way. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so when I saw you, I saw you talking to Jay about psychedelics. I had just gotten into uh, psychedelics in a therapeutic way. Okay. So I had, I mean, like I said, uh, I grew up Pentecostal, so I didn't have my first <laughs> sip of alcohol until I was 21. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, I couldn't even say uh, hell in the house. Wow. You know? You know, stuff like that, little little things like that that people overlook, um, which can drive a man insane, and it does. You know, absolutely. What I mean? Yeah. Um, so that literal interpretation of the fundamentalist church is is something that uh, is near and dear to my heart because I sympathize with those people, and mm-hmm. uh, like I said, you know, there's a lot of good-hearted Christian people within that denomination, uh, in, in, in you know evangelical denominations that. Um, that need a little bit more, just to enjoy their life a little bit. Like not saying hell, like man, saying hell every once in a while is pretty fun. <laughs> like what the hell? I mean, but like that's that was how extreme it was, right? You know what I mean? Um, so then when I got out to L.A., I started. Uh, I couldn't sleep in my twenties, stressed out, anxiety, not not where I wanted to be. You know, all the, all the stuff in your twenties where you're like, you know, people are thinking I should be here, and and, right. and I'm not there yet. You know, you're so ego uh, egotistical. Right. And um, I couldn't sleep, so I tried sleeping uh, pills for like, I don't know, a month. Right. And I just felt like a zombie. Oh, jeez. You know I mean? 
And right. I was like, I can't do that. I got to work out. Like, I got to stay in shape. Like, and at the time, I was training like MMA and still coaching wrestling and stuff. And, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and I moved out to LA and I waited two years. I got my card, I got my medical card. Okay. You know, I, I, I was like, you know, trying to be as, oh, yeah. as legal as I could about it. And um, I smoked and that helped me sleep. Uh huh. Um, and then I was like, oh, well, maybe it's not as, uh, not as damning as I thought it would be. And then I got into psychedelic therapy research and, uh, and well, what started. psychedelics specifically psilocybin, MDMA, both, both of those, both those. Yeah. And so, um, I started microdosing psilocybin first and I felt, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of benefits anxiety wise, you know, and, uh, depression wise. And then I did uh, an MDMA therapy session in that, okay. uh, I would say that's the greatest thing I've ever done for myself. But I have a background as a Christian. You know what I mean? Okay. I, and, and I think this is where what our conversation can get really interesting. Okay. And I want to hear your, your thoughts on this. I find that people, and I don't know what your background is. I should have asked this before I uh, state this, this statement. Um, but I think a lot of people without a religious background find psychedelics and find that it's the the doorway to understanding themselves or maybe the universe or, or, or a combination mm -hmm. of both. And I didn't have that. So my, my identity and my, uh, my worldview has been shaped through my Christian beliefs. Right. Before the psychedelics. And so I, you know, like I said, I did psychedelics in a therapeutic way, and that has actually made my relationship with God better. 